Okay. So, first of all, I will talk about the United Kingdom. So, here are some facts about the UK. Um, the UK is located off the northwestern coast of the European mainland, and it is 13 hours from KL to the capital of the UK, which is London. And the UK is a sovereign country that actually a sovereign state, sorry, that actually consists of four countries, which is England, Scotland, Wales, and Northern Ireland. And their currency is British pounds. Now, in the UK, if you plan to go there and study, um, it takes about three years for you to um, graduate with an undergraduate bachelor's degree. Okay, so here's a map of the United Kingdom. On the right is where Wales, Scotland and England is. On the left, a small part of this part of the island is Northern Ireland, which is part of the UK. Okay, so... Hi, Shandell, sorry for yes. uh, bothering you. We just can't mm -hmm. see, the, see your slide for the next page. Mm. Okay, hold on, let me try again. Okay, thank you. Oh, yes, okay. now can. Now you can see it? Ah, okay. All right, so then I'll have to present it this way. Okay, so I'm sorry, everyone. I will start again. So here is a brief um, introduction on where the UK is and where Plymouth is located. Okay, so again, some facts about the United Kingdom. First of all, um, the UK is an island country that is located off the northwestern coast of the European mainland. Now, the United Kingdom is what we call a sovereign state that consists of four countries, which is England, the largest country, Scotland, Wales, and Northern Ireland, which is the smallest country. So it is 13 hours from Kuala Lumpur to London, which is the capital of the UK. Their currency is British pounds. Now, if you plan to go to the UK to study, it takes about three years for you to graduate with a bachelor's degree. Okay, so here's an overview of the map of the United Kingdom. So on the right is where Scotland, Wales and England is. On the left, a small part of it is Northern Ireland. Okay, so here's a better view of the United Kingdom. So this is where basically on the right is the whole island of the United Kingdom. Then on the left, um, Southern Ireland is a country on its own. Northern Ireland is part of the UK. Okay, and the capital of the UK, as I mentioned earlier, is London. So it is located here, um, if you can see my mouse. And it's located within England. So. If you can see my mouse, Plymouth is on the left-hand side at the bottom, all the way here. Okay, so now where is Plymouth? As I mentioned earlier, it is, if you saw the map, it is on the bottom left of the UK. And so it is also where City College Plymouth is located. Okay, so here is a short video of Plymouth. I'm not sure if I play it. Can you guys hear the sound? Can you guys hear the sound of the video? Um, so far, we, 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 could, we can. 
cannot. Okay. Mm, what if I try this? Hold on. Can you hear it now? Okay, um, everyone, can you hear me? Yes, Shandia. Okay, so here's a little bit of information about the city of Plymouth. So it is a port city, which means that it is located um, next to the sea. And it is located on the south coast of Devon. There are about 27,000 people who live in Plymouth and it is rated as one of the safest and happiest cities in the UK. So the people there are quite nice, they're very friendly, and they're very relaxed. So because Plymouth is not located in the near the capital, so it is more affordable compared to, say, London or, for example, Bristol. And it is... The city is surrounded by many towns and villages that have very nice views like Cornwall and the Dartmoor National Park. And it's a fairly exciting city because they do hold many different festivals throughout the year. So it's a, quite a happening city as well. Okay, I think that is the end of my presentation. Um, Rosa, I'll pass the floor back to you. Okay, thank you, Shandell. Thank you for your uh, introduction. Okay, now I would like to invite Miss Elaine for the next presentation. Hello. Yeah. Nice to see you. And uh, I'm not sure how uh, life is with you. It's very... Um, Cloudy here today and a little bit chilly. <laughs> so one good thing about um, the UK and Plymouth is that you get to experience all the different kinds of weather if you come to visit us. You can have sunshine and rain and wind and more sunshine all in one day. 
So it's a, a good place if you're interested in the weather. So I'm going to carry on today with our speaking and listening tasters. And today we're focusing on listening. And I want to think about the things that might make listening um, a little more difficult for you or things that um, you might need to think about to improve your listening. So I want to share my screen with you. And if I just click on that, you should be able, I hope, to see that. So we are here, Paste 1.4. Okay, so I will assume that you can um, see that. If you can't, uh, do unmute and let me know. Otherwise, I assume that you can do. So we're thinking um, today about listening skills and extending your listening skills. And you might think about the word extend. I use the word extend because you have listening skills already and we just want to extend them to include more skills but we don't want to forget your original skills because when we're learning a language if we're thinking about any of the skills you need listening speaking reading writing you need all of the early skills that you learn as well as the later developed skills that you acquire. So it's really important to think about keeping all your knowledge in um, your memory, in your working memory. So it's at the front of your memory. Don't put anything to the back because when we learn language, it's more of a spiral. So you keep going back to um, pick up some of the vocabulary that you learned and then move ahead to gain some more, and then you move back again to remember the old. So you need to be able to think about extending but not forgetting your early skills. So today we're going to just recap, see if we can remember a little bit from last week, and then I want to practice listening with you, and we'll share some of our um, thoughts on what we found easy or difficult and I can give you some feedback on how we get on. So to begin with, shall we recap? Can you remember, can you put in the chat box any of the key points that you remember from the first listening section? And you can probably see that I've got a box there with some of the key points behind it. So if you can't remember anything, don't worry too much. I will um, help you. But if you can remember anything, pop it into the uh, meeting chat and we'll see if uh, we've got any suggestions. So nothing there yet at the moment but sometimes it takes a little time we i think we sometimes have a little uh delay between uh between the uk and uh all of you in uh, asia maybe you can't remember because we were working hard on speaking skills yesterday oh yeah aisha yes listen to song lyrics yes so uh listening to song lyrics is a good way to practice so practice is something that we need to do a lot of. And I will just remind you that we've got two ways of talking about uh, practice. So you could say practice listening because practice with an S is a verb. And we might have practice with a C which is a noun. So we might say we are going to do a listening practice, um, like a listening task. So yes, listening to song lyrics is a good way to practice. Um, thank you very much, Aisha. Let's have a look at some of the things that I remember from last week. So we want to remember not to get distracted. Try not to use our phones. 
try not to look out of the window too much, try to keep listening with a really clear focus. And that is difficult. If I am in an IELTS exam with students and we're doing the listening exam, there is usually one question which I don't get because I stopped listening and I thought about something else. So it's really hard to maintain focus and we need to practice doing that. A way of helping ourselves to maintain focus or to keep focused on the information is to make notes. And if you're making notes, then you're having to listen and write and listen at the same time again. So try not to get distracted, put your phone away, uh, don't look out of the window, don't look at your friends, just think about the listening. And in the IELTS exam, um, it's quite a short listening exam. It's just 30 minutes. So it's not too long for you to focus. While you're listening, you might be listening or looking for cues. And you might remember that a cue is a hint or a prompt. So if we need to write down somebody's name and we hear a question, what's your name? then we know that we'll probably hear the name next. So that's a cue or a prompt that we need to be aware of um, and ready to record the information. We need to notice the organisation. And this is where we are thinking about predicting. How do we know what information we need to record? Well, if we look at the answer sheet and the gaps where we need to complete the answers, then we can probably get a good idea of the information needed and when we will hear that information. So if we need to take um, the information about, for example, somebody's name, somebody's address, somebody's telephone number, if those um, questions are in that order, you will hear the information in that order. So if you hear the address and you haven't heard the name, forget about the name because you must have missed it. You need to be ready to hear the telephone number. So you need to be ready to get all the marks you can and forget the marks that you may have missed. And making useful notes. Useful is the key there. Useful notes are not every word. Useful notes are keywords nouns, verbs, other smaller words like a, and, in addition, for example, we don't need to write the whole thing, we can just write a plus sign, which is quicker. So we want to make useful notes that don't take too long to write so that we can still keep listening. Thinking about um, the organisation, and thinking about what information is coming next. If you think you've missed a piece of information, as I was saying, you need to move on and be ready for the next piece because you will not get 100% in any IELTS exam. It's a different kind of exam. We are used to get it, taking exams where you have a pass or a fail and how well you pass is important because you are taking that exam because you are at a level already. With IELTS, people from all levels of English take the same exam. So if you're advanced English or beginner's English, you still take the same IELTS exam. So if you get a higher mark, that's because you are an advanced learner, if you get a lower mark, it will reflect your um, elementary or beginner level. But it doesn't mean that you aren't good enough at English. It just means that's your level at the moment. And then you might do some more study and go up a level, do some more study and go up a level. So you would find that the same in um, British schools if students had to do the IELTS exam. Younger students would get lower scores, 
older students would get higher scores because they're more experienced in using English. I'm going to give you a cue now. OK, so when you hear that in a lecture, that's usually because we've stopped talking about one point and we're moving on to another point and we're thinking about the next idea. So we're going to think about putting our ideas into practice, predicting possible answers and areas of focus. We'll focus on different topic areas, different vocabularies, linking phrases and so on. And we are going to use the chat box today. So I want us to have a look at um, the information that we might be hearing and thinking about different possible answers and how we might approach the answers. So if we have a look here, I can show you the um, Taster 1.4 practical. If I don't hear from you, then I'm assuming you can see the Google Doc listening section one. If I do hear you unmute and speak, then I will realize that you can't um, see it. But hopefully you should be able to see that. It's telling me it's sharing. So we've got listening section one and we've got a conversation. Listen to the conversation and complete the information below. So let's have a look at those questions and we can see what kind of conversation in the chat box can you put what kind of conversation you think is going to take place we can see the top of the box it tells us plymouth train station so what do you think the subject of the conversation might be what do you think people might be talking about if you put your ideas in the chat box any ideas what happens in a train station well we might have let me have a look inquiry we could have an inquiry about trains Oh, you can't see the conversation. OK, don't worry, Aisha. So don't worry about that. <laughs> Not to worry. I can see both, but maybe that's because I'm the host. Thank you for letting me know. So we've got um, questions here, one to nine. We can see the first two questions, one and two. We've got customer name. So we need to know a little bit about how we record names in English. We know there are going to be two names. And in English, we would normally record the first name first and the family name second. And that's how you normally hear the information. So that's probably what you will have to do. So that's something that you can predict already. You're going to listen for a name. Some English names are very familiar for everybody. Some names are a little more tricky to spell. Some of your names, um, I might not be sure about how to spell them if I am just listening. And it's the same with English. IELTS are very careful about the word, the names that they will use. So it could be that the customer name is Harry Potter and probably they won't give you very much help with that as a name because they think most people will know the name Harry Potter. Or it could be that the name is Harry James. Again, Harry, they probably won't give you any help with, but James, 
they might double check the spelling in the conversation to help you because it can be a difficult name to hear. It's a good idea to think about names and how they sound and how they're spelt because that will give you um, a little advantage in IELTS. You can record the answer more confidently. You can see the address there for number three. And this is how we normally set out an address in English. We have the road, the city, and the postcode. We call it the postcode, not the zip code. The first piece of information would normally be the house or apartment number. So when we look at that, we can see that the address is missing a number. So you're probably going to have to listen for a number. If we had the number there, we might have the city missing. So again, it's good to become familiar with how that is organized so that you know which piece of information is missing. And that's a very standard way of recording an address. Number, road, town or city, postcode. Postcodes are normally two letters followed by a number. You can see the postcode there is PL1. It could be PL21. So we might have two letters followed by one or two numbers. And then the, the second bunch of numbers and letters is normally a number first and then two letters. So normally we will have two letters which are connected with the city or the town. You can see PL is like Plymouth. And then we've got PL1, 3DG. So that's how you would expect to see a postcode. Mobile numbers, we usually separate the mobile numbers so that they are four numbers followed by three or four numbers and another three or four. You can see here that we've got four numbers followed by three numbers and we've got four spaces. So we know that we're listening for numbers. Like the address, when it comes to numbers, IELTS are going to test your knowledge of English. They're going to give you numbers which might be misheard. So we might have something like a number 17 because that can sound like 70. So 17, 17 or 70, 70. Again, that will normally be clarified if you listen to the conversation. So if you're not sure about the number because it sounds like another number, listen carefully to the conversation and they will explain which number it is. We can see the next um, block of information. We're moving away from personal information and we're moving to train reservation. We've got from, to, and date. So we're thinking about from a place to a place. And again, if it's going to be a city like London, they probably will not give you the spelling of that. But if it's a place like Edinburgh, which is a difficult place name to spell for British people as well as everybody else, they would probably give you the spelling information that you need. It's not a trick exam. It's not an exam which is trying to trick you and not give you marks. It's trying to test your English knowledge. So we can see we're probably going to have two place names there. If the customer is living in Plymouth, it might be that they're traveling to or from Plymouth. Plymouth might be one of the places. So we can't be sure, but we need to be ready for that. And the date. And again, with dates, it's really important to know how dates are organized. In British English, we have the date or the day first. 
So it will be a number between 1 and 31. Then we have the month. So it will be a number between 1 and 12. And then we have the year. We can see we only need two numbers for the year. So we may not need the full date, like 2021. We might just need to put 21. Train fare. Does anybody know what a fare is? When we're talking about traveling on transport, if we're talking about traveling on an aeroplane, a train, a bus, the fare is the price. And we can see there that we've got a pound sign. And Chandel was mentioning the currency of the UK in her presentation being um, British pounds, and that's our pound sign. It's very important in IELTS to notice that that pound sign is there because we've got two different kinds of train fares. We've got first class and standard class. So we're going to have to complete that with a number. So if, for example, the first class train fare is £10, we need to put in number eight just 10. We don't need to put 10 pounds because the pound sign is already there. So if we put, if we write 10 pounds, even though 10 might be correct, we would get the answer incorrect because the pound sign is there. So we wouldn't say 10 pounds pounds. We normally put our pound sign before the number of pounds and nothing after it. Even though when we're talking, we say it the other way around. We say 10 pounds, but we write pound sign 10. And that is English knowledge that they will be testing in IELTS. So for all of those numbers, it could be that the um, the train fare is 13 pounds. We need to make sure that we've got 1313 or 3030. And it will be made clear to you which it is. You just need to listen carefully. So we've got some ideas about the kind of information that we, we might need to complete here. We can see it's personal information. Um, about name, address, phone number. We can see that it's train reservation from and to, so it's probably going to be place names again and a date. And we can see that we need to include prices. The IELTS listening exam normally has this kind of information at the beginning of the exam. So the first listening exercise is quite straightforward with this kind of personal information, testing your knowledge of familiar, regular um, names, place names and numbers. It shouldn't be too difficult. You may not get everything because you may miss something when, you, when you're listening, or you miss, may mishear something. But most people will be able to do most of it. And that's because it's designed for all levels. So as you go through the listening exam, the questions and the listening gets more and more difficult. So the last few questions are more difficult because they are for people with advanced listening skills. So you are not expected to be able to get all of the answers. You get the answers which are matching your level of English. And that's why you want to make sure that you get as many marks as you can, because your English is probably better than you think about it or being because we get nervous, don't we, when we're thinking about our, um, our listening or our ability in another language. So I'm going to 
have a look at the conversation here and I'm going to play the conversation to you and I would like you to make a note of the information that you hear. So I will leave this up on the screen and you can make a note on a piece of paper or you can make a note in your phone or wherever you want to of what you think the answers are. And then we will share our ideas. So we'll listen to the conversation. We will make a note of the answers. And then I will stop sharing the um, information and I will go back to the teams so you can put your ideas into the chat box. So first of all, are we ready? And did you notice I said so? Are you ready? That's because I wanted you to hear that prompt and think, OK, we're going to listen now. So I need to focus on the information. Yeah, I think it should be fairly straightforward for you. Don't worry um, if you don't get everything. We'll think about what might have been tricky and why if it is. OK, so I'm going to play it now. Afternoon, Plymouth Railways. Hello, is that Plymouth train station? Yes, you're through to Plymouth station. Great. I'd like to buy a ticket to Oxford, please. Of course. Would you like it posted to you? Oh, yes, please. Great. I'll just take some details. I need to take your name first. It's Sarah Green. Is that Sarah with an H? No, no H. S-A-R-A. -A. But it's green with an E on the end. OK, so S-A-R-A-G-R-E-E-N-E. -E -E -E. Yes, that's it. OK, and your address? 116 Hill Road, Plymouth, PL1 3DG. Uh, sorry, I didn't catch the number of your house. It's 116 116. Thank you. And can I take your mobile number? Yes, it's 0707 592 Sorry, was that 1933 or 1993? 1933. Thank you. And where did you say you were travelling to? Oxford. From Plymouth? Yes, that's right. Great. So from Plymouth to Oxford. And when are you travelling? The 30th of May. Right. Three zero zero five two one. Great. OK, we have two different prices. Oh, what are they? First class is £127 and standard class is £97. Mm, I'm not sure. I'll have to think about that and get back to you. No problem. But don't wait too long as the tickets can sell out quite quickly. OK, thanks for letting me know. Bye. No problem. Bye. OK, hopefully everybody has managed to hear most of that. And I'm going to stop sharing. And I think uh, LPZ Yang, you sh yes, you should be viewing the google slides until now and i'm going you're going to be viewing me now okay so hopefully you were able to see the information and make a note of the answers that you should have got so first of all what was the name of the person who was making the um, ticket purchase can anybody put the name of the person that you heard? I'm hoping that you heard. Sarah Green, lovely, Shireen, excellent, perfect. Everybody's got that no H on the end and an E on the end. Be careful, it's fine for us at the moment to use small s and small g. But be careful in 
the IELTS exam, you would need to make sure you've got capital letters for S and G for the names. So capitals would be important there. But for our chat box, I'm just happy that you've got the correct spellings. Excellent. And I think, uh, Leonard, I can see that that's probably your um, typing. I'm sure you've got green as well as everybody else. OK, so the number of the house, what was the number of the house? Lovely, 116, 116, and that's a typical number, 116, and they do repeat that, 116, so we're sure. And uh, the number of the mobile phone, we've got some of the numbers, but we need the last four numbers. Oh, use your yan, excellent. We've got all the numbers there. So we needed to complete 1933. And you can tell that they repeat that kind of information um, so that you get it. So well done there. Sometimes they might not say 1933. They might say 1933. And you need to be ready to hear that double, which would be 33, or even triple, which would be 333. So if something is a double number, it's twice. If something is a triple number, it's three times. You won't hear, I think it'd be extremely unlikely for them to say quadruple two, where you would have four twos. But you, normally double, possibly triple, normally double. Well done, guys. Correct. And where are we going from? Yeah, we'll just do from first. We're going from... Plymouth. Brilliant. And um, where are we going to? Oxford. Yes, we are. And I can see that some of you, or all of you, I think, have put capital O and capital P. So well done for doing that. Place names, people's names, we need to have the capital letter at the beginning and everybody has spelt Oxford correctly. Don't think we had the spelling in in there but you can see that some things don't get spelled because they are words that might be well known already so Oxford is one of those. Plymouth, not everybody would know how to spell Plymouth but actually you've already been given that information in the address earlier so that that was there. So sometimes you need to make sure that you remember what information is there because it has given you the spelling that you might need. Great. And the date. And I think we gave it to you nicely and easily. <laughs> 13th of May. Good. 13th of May. Don't forget your capital letters for May. Which year was it? And how were they going to write it? How should you have written um, the 30th of May? So we've got lots of 13th and we've got a 30th. Which do you think is correct? You would have heard the person in the ticket office repeat the date so that it looked like this. So your answers are um, correct. Aisha, you've got the 30th of May. However, the only person who would have got a mark for that is me because I have recorded it in the same way that they have put the um, gaps in the box. That might be because uh, you made a note for yourself. So just be aware, I'm not saying you've necessarily got it wrong, um, but it should be three zero, and then May should be 05, because the guy in the ticket office repeated it 
in that way. And we'd had the um, two gaps with the spaces between. And the prices, how much is first class? Anybody remember? Can you remember how I said you need to write it? We should have, this should be our answer. Okay, so we've got the pound sign already there. So the pound sign doesn't need to be included nor does the word pounds need to be included. So you just need to put the 127 so that the completed information would look like that. But you've already, the pound sign is already there. And the standard class, Ninety-seven, ninety-seven. Good work. So we had nine questions, and I think most of you would have had seven, eight, possibly nine as your score, which is very good. So you are probably scoring in the well let's see if you had a seven or eight you're scoring in the 70s or 80s so well done guys that's a really high score and you should aim to complete this information quickly and easily because it is the easiest information in the listening exam so you want to increase your chances as much as you can. You want to try and get as many marks in the first part of the listening exam as you can. Because you know when you go to the next part of the listening, it gets harder and harder. And so while you're on something fairly easy, why not give yourself every opportunity to um, correct complete it. So I'm going to go back now to um, sharing our slides and you should be able to see those in a moment. Um, then we're going to have a look at the next part of our listening. Okay, share. So we've had a look at those um, questions and we've had a look at the answers as well. We're going to have a look at questions 11 to 15 and we're going to consider the type of answer that might be required, whether it's a noun, an adjective, a verb, a number, all those sorts of um, pieces of information that will help us listen for the right answer. So we're not going to work with the people in the breakout room, we'll work together. I think it's uh, going to be a lot easier for us in this session to do that. So we've completed all that information in that section, and now we're going to listen to information with questions 10 to 20. First of all, we need to complete sentences one to 15. Very important to look at your instructions here because it will help you. It tells you what kind of answer you need to include. You need to include only one word or number. So if we think we know the answer, but we think it's two words or two numbers or a word and a number, that can't be the right answer. So if we have a look at these questions, Farming has a something opportunity to help meet climate targets. If we look at that sentence and we close the gap, we can say farming has an opportunity to meet 
help meet climate targets. So that sentence would make sense without the word there. So we're thinking that what kind of word can go in there? It's a word that's going to describe what kind of opportunity there is. So we might have a word like farming has a new opportunity to help meet climate targets. So we're probably going to be looking for an adjective. We want to listen for words that might be opportunity or might be synonyms for opportunity. It could be that the word is something like chance. And we need to show the examiner that we know chance and opportunity have similar meanings. And it's the word that describes that opportunity or chance that we're listening for. Minimizing the carbon something will not automatically mean fewer animals. And there's a word that often goes with carbon that we might have heard already. So this is a vocabulary check for you. Do you know which words go together? So the carbon something you might have heard already. You might not be able to think of it, but you might recognize it when you hear it in the listening. Number 12, daily meat intake in the UK has reduced by something grams. Now, if we think about grams, what are grams? They're a unit of weight, aren't they? What do we talk about when we talk about grams? We're normally talking about a number. So again, we might need to be ready for different words. We might not hear exactly the same words in the talk, but we are going to hear about the UK eating meat every day, but that level being reduced or going down by a certain amount. And it's going to be grams and we will need the number. Welsh government statistics found that farming leads to approximately, and again, here we've got a percentage sign. So we're going to need a number before that percentage sign. We're not going to hear that it's uh, Welsh government statistics found that farming leads to approximately green percent. We never talk about um, an animal percent, it's always a number. So we know that 12 and 13 are going to be numbers. Wales is home to an amazing variety of something. Are we going to have an amazing variety of yellow? Probably not. Are we going to have an amazing variety of friendly? Probably not. An amazing variety of quick? None of these make sense, do they? We don't know what the variety is, but we know it will be a noun. We also know that if it's a variety, it's going to be more than one something. So it could be an amazing variety of houses, cars. It's going to be a plural. And listening for plurals is a really important aspect of the listening for IELTS. And we're going to do a special focus on listening for plurals tomorrow, because I think it's a very useful thing to be aware of. Finally, we've got question 15. Notice that word, finally? That was your cue that I'm looking at, the last one. Dr. Williams suggested that reducing the number of animals on farms is possible, but that to then do something, the same things from elsewhere in the world, would not be sensible. So we're thinking about reducing animal numbers, but then to something, and if we say two, 
We might have then after it, but if we can take then away, to is normally followed by do something, isn't it? So we're probably thinking about a verb in that gap there. So let's have a, a, a recap or a, a quick uh, revision of that. Number 10, we think we're going to look for an adjective. Number 11, a word that is often used with carbon. 12 and 13, we're looking for numbers. 14, we think, will be a noun. And 15, quite possibly a verb. We need to remember that we will probably now hear synonyms or antonyms so not exactly the same words. When we were listening to the first part of the listening exam, we had exactly the same information. We might think we need to think about other words instead of farming, other words instead of opportunity, other words instead of daily meat intake or reduced what other words can you think of? So if I just stop sharing for a moment and we'll go back to the meet chat, can anybody think of another word which means the same as farming? Can you think of another word that means farming? Any suggestions for farming? Maybe beginning with A. Agriculture, that's a good word. Agriculture again is coming up. So great, but we need to listen for that word as well as farming because we don't know which word we will get. Other words were things like um, reduced. So can you think of another word which means the same as reduced? Any suggestions? Reduce, lesson, yes. We could have go down, lower, um, becomes lower. Anything which is getting smaller, diminished, that's a good word. So those are good words, we need to be ready. We don't know which word we might hear. So we might hear Reduce, we might hear lessen, diminish, um, going down, getting smaller. Those are the sort of things we need to be ready for. So what I'll do now is put those questions back up onto the screen. Um, and you can have a look at those while you listen to the information and see if you can make a note of the words which are missing. It's not going to be as slow as the first exercise and things won't be repeated as much as the first exercise. So do be ready for those five answers that we need. So I'll begin. Climate change. Could Welsh farming help to meet targets? Agriculture is in a unique position to help meet climate targets, a Welsh farming union leader has said. John Davis of NFU Kimru said, while agriculture was a source of greenhouse gases, it had a role to play by absorbing carbon and other gases. He said reducing the carbon footprint of farmers would not necessarily mean lower livestock numbers. New climate targets that affect agriculture could be agreed at the COP26 climate change conference. A recent study by the National Diet and Nutrition Survey found that daily meat consumption in the UK had dropped by about 17 grams per person per day. But it was unclear if this was due to environmental reasons. 
there are large variations in the environmental impact of meat production, depending on livestock feed and how and where the meat is produced. But the agriculture industry accepted there was room for improvement. Welsh government statistics found that agriculture is responsible for about 12% of total greenhouse gas emissions in Wales. That's lower than transport, which is 16%, lower than businesses at 24%, and finally lower than energy supply at 29%. John Davis of National Farmers Union, Kimru, said that there are many ways of dealing with the carbon issue. He said, we have a fantastic range of trees in Wales. We can add to that. We have peat bogs and many other things in terms of measuring carbon. Climate change is one of the world's most pressing problems. Governments must promise more ambitious cuts in warming gases if we are to prevent greater global temperature rises. The summit in Glasgow is where change could happen. In order to reach the target, individual farmers will need to calculate the carbon footprint of their farms. One answer according to some people, would be to reduce the number of livestock, according to Mr. Davis. He also said that we must remember we need food and it would make no environmental sense to cut back on livestock here and then to import the same produce from another part of the world. Okay, so we've been listening to um, information that uh, might help us to complete the answers to the questions. And let's see if we can find those answers. So I'm going to stop sharing uh, the taster and go back to the camera go back to the meat uh, the meat go back to the meeting chat were you able to listen to the information and complete the answers anybody did anybody get the answer for the first one? Were you able to see the questions while we were listening? Let's have a look. So we've got um, our 10 questions and we'll have a look at that and we'll see if we can complete them. I'll go through them with you and we'll see if we can complete them together. So if you're feeling a bit unsure, don't worry. We'll have a look at them together. Oh, I can see there's a message coming through. You couldn't see the questions. Okay, can you see the questions now? I think you can. So what we'll do, yes, okay. What we'll do is we'll go through the questions together and I will give you the information while we go through the questions. Okay, so if you can listen to the first part and just make a note we're going to hear the answers to questions one and two climate change could welsh farming help to meet targets agriculture is in a unique position to help meet tar climate targets a welsh farming union leader has said john davis of nfu kimru has said that while agriculture was a source of greenhouse gases, 
it had a role to play by absorbing carbon and other gases. He said reducing the carbon footprint of farms would not necessarily mean lower livestock numbers. OK, I'm going to stop sharing for a moment. And can you give me the answers to the first two questions? What was the first one, the first word that was missing? What kind of opportunity? Oh, sorry, yeah. Agriculture was mentioned, yes. But if we want to think about the gap there, we're thinking about the um, number 10 question, which we needed to complete the word, yes. You're right, Aisha, that agriculture was the other word used for farming. But Vincent, you are correct that we had a gap that needed to be completed with the word unique. Did anybody complete the second one, question 11, with the word that was connected with carbon? Lucy's got footprint. Good. Well done, guys. Lim has got footprint. So we've got carbon footprint. Those words often go together. And that's a test of your um, vocabulary knowledge that IELTS will be doing. So let's go back to our um, questions. And I will share the questions so you can see them again. Uh, Share. So now we're going to look at questions 12 and 13, and we're looking for a number. If you can't see the questions, just take your mic off and let me know. Otherwise, I assume you can see the questions. We want a number of grams and we want a number percentage for 12 and 13. So I will give you the information. New climate targets that affect agriculture could be agreed at the COP26 climate change conference. A recent study by the National Diet and Nutrition Survey found daily meat consumption in the UK had dropped by about 17 grams per person per day. But it was unclear if this was due to environmental reasons. There are large variations in the environmental impact of meat production, depending on livestock feed and how and where meat is produced. But the agriculture industry accepted there was room for improvement. Welsh government statistics found agriculture is responsible for about 12% of total greenhouse gas emissions in Wales. That's lower than transport emissions at 16%, business emissions at 24%, and energy supply emissions at 29%. Okay. We'll stop sharing again. So you should be able to complete the information. I can see you, Zijan has put 17 grams and 12 percent, 17 and 12, 17 and 12, great. Don't forget, Shireen and Loke, Loke are correct in that they have just put the numbers and they haven't mentioned the grams or the percent. You've already got that in your um, answer sheet. So for a mark for those questions, you just need the numbers 17 and 12. However, if you've put grams and 12 and percent, don't worry, because it's not an exam, you have got the correct numbers. So that's the main thing to focus on at the moment. Okay, let's have a look at the last question. Uh, let's see if we can do that and then I think you're doing quite well, guys. Uh, we've got 
questions 14 and 15. Wales is home to an amazing variety of what? And Dr. Williams suggested that reducing the number of animals on farms is possible, but that to then do something with the same things from elsewhere in the world would not be sensible. Okay, so John Davis of National Farmers Union Kimru said that farmers can cut emissions to net zero without reducing livestock numbers. He said while agriculture was currently a source of emissions, it could also provide answers to some of the problems. He said here in Wales, we have many ways of dealing with the carbon issue. We have a fantastic range of trees in Wales. We can add to that. We have peat bogs and we have many other things in terms of measuring carbon. He was also talking to Dr. Williams, who said that one answer, according to some people, would be to reduce the number of livestock. But we also need to remember that we need food and it would make no environmental sense to cut back on livestock here and then to import the same produce from another part of the world. Okay. So I will stop sharing those questions and in the chat box, can you put the answers for the last two questions? Wales is home to an amazing variety of something and it would make no sense to do something. Trees, Lucy, yes, you're quite right. And we've got a plural there, Aisha, well done. Trees and Vincent has also suggested import for the last question. Do others agree? Trees and import for question 15, what do we do? Do we think Vincent is correct? I think he is. So it would be... Uh, if I go back, we've got trees and import. If we have a look at that um, on the screen, we can see share. We can see that Wales is home to an amazing variety of trees. We didn't hear the word variety, we heard the word range, so we need to know that range and variety have similar meanings. And Dr. Williams suggested that reducing the number of animals on farms is possible, but that to then import the same things from elsewhere in the world would not be sensible. So well done, excellent work. Okay. Back to our meeting and our chat. Great. So we've got the last part of the listening that we can complete um, before we finish today. And we're going to think about the uh, final section where we might need to include longer answers. So if I just share my screen. We need to complete a longer answer. So we had one word where we had to complete um, a sentence and we could get a good idea of what kind of word we were listening for when we read the questions. That's why you get time in the IELTS exam to read the questions before you listen so that you can do that kind of prediction. Read the questions, how many words can you use and are you allowed to use a number? So let's have a look at the next questions. And I think you should be able to see those questions. If you can't see the questions, please take off 
the mic and tell me. If I don't hear from you, I assume you can. We've got questions 16 to 20, and it says here, no more than three words. Some answers may require fewer than three words, but do not use more than three words. So you could write one word answer, two word answer, or three word answer, but not four words or more. And we've got some questions. What has Alok Sharma, the COP26 president, said that he hopes to see for global methane reductions at the conference? What did he call the possibility of reducing methane emissions by feed additives? And we've got part of the answer there. In the middle, we've got a game changer. So we are going to need words before that and after that. And I think I'm just sharing with you. Let me stop sharing. I'm just noticing, actually, those are the answers. So if you were reading the questions, you might have seen the answers. If you weren't reading the questions, you won't have seen the answers. So let's see how good your um, skills at uh, reading quickly were. Okay, so I'm going to share with you again now. <laughs> That's because I was preparing it earlier and I was checking my answers. Okay, so we're going to share that practical document. Okay. So we need um, one word, two words, or three words. So Alok Sharma said he hopes to see something for global methane reductions. What did he call the possibility of reducing methane emissions by feed additives? And were you paying attention? Do you already know the answer? How have some farmers calculated their carbon footprint? In what way have they done that? How much of the Rug estate farm is woodland or peatland? So probably we're going to think about a number here or maybe a percentage or a fraction. It could be 100%, it could be 50%, it could be half, a quarter, it could be a third. We don't know. So we'll have a look at what that might be, if it's a percentage or a fraction. Or maybe it might be 300 acres. It might be uh, an amount like that. And finally, how does the owner of the estate describe the positive impact of organic grassland? So we're going to hear um, a descriptive word or phrase there. So I will leave those questions up on the screen and I will give you the rest of the information and then we'll see if we've got the right answers. I'm hoping you've got two or three right already. I don't want to share that with you. I want to share Uh, a tab. Okay. It's disappeared, hasn't it? Let's go back to those questions. Let's see if we can complete them before the end of the class. Share. Okay. Uh, 
And I don't think it wants to let me share the questions while I look at something else. That might be because I'm not so familiar with Teams. So I think what we will do is I will share the script with you. No, what I will do is I will get you to take a snapshot. So can you take a photograph or a screenshot of the questions, please? So here we are with the questions. OK, so I want you to take a photograph of that or take a snapshot or make a note. And then I will give you the information and you need to complete the answers. If it's difficult for you to make a note of this, don't worry. We'll discuss it afterwards. OK, so if you're able to take a photograph, brilliant. Um, if not, don't worry. So I'm going to give you the answers. Now we'll give you the information. So changes to cattle feed could slash methane output, John Davis said. And Alok Sharma, the COP26 president, has said he hoped to see ambitious new targets for global methane reductions at the conference. However, Mr Davis said this would not necessarily lead to a reduction in livestock numbers. He said, I chair a committee of 20 of the top scientists in the UK. And we're talking about the possibility of reducing methane emissions by feed additives, natural feed additives, by between 30 and 70 percent. Now that's a game changer. He encouraged people to buy Welsh and British meat. He said, we hear a lot of talk about reducing your meat intake. But in Wales, we're amongst the lowest carbon footprint producers in the world. Some farmers have already calculated their carbon footprints voluntarily, while others have been asked by supermarkets who sell their produce to do that as well. Dr Williams said governments are likely to ask for this in the future. The Ruger State Farm in Wales is not typical as it's larger than most. It has employed someone to monitor the farm's performance and contribution to tackling climate change. About a third of the farm is woodland or peatland, which absorb and store carbon dioxide. And there are also a number of renewable energy schemes, including solar panels. The owner of the Ruug estate, Lord Nubra, said the positive impact of organic grassland was very significant. He said, I don't think people realize the importance of organic farming. It's about as sustainable as you can make it. OK, so let's go back to our questions and see if we can answer those questions. So we have question 16 and we're looking at Alok Sharma. And what did Alok Sharma say that he hoped to see for global methane reductions at the conference? Any suggestions in the meat, chat meet, meat chat. <laughs> We're talking about meat too much, aren't we? Any suggestions in the meat chat? No, no suggestions. We would be looking for ambitious new targets. So ambitious new targets. But I think you might have noticed that these questions are getting a little more tricky, aren't they? And that's because 
as we go through with IELTS listening, then we've got more and more difficult questions coming up. So the um, description that Alok Sharma gave um, to the um, reduction of methane emissions, what did he call the possibility of reducing methane emissions? Anybody? Shall I give you a helpful hint? It's a game. A game changer. So if you had that um, in your answers, well done. If not, don't worry because we are on the more difficult questions. So if you're feeling nervous about suggesting the answers, don't worry. Sometimes we feel nervous, even when we've got the question, the answer right, we might be worried that uh, we're going to give the wrong answer. And some farmers have already calculated their carbon footprint, and they're thinking about doing that voluntarily. So well done if you've got voluntarily there. If you haven't, don't worry, it's not the end of the world. We'll have a look tomorrow at some more um, in-depth ways of thinking about how to complete this information. And I think everybody did really well on the first section and well on the second section. So the third section is always going to be a little more tricky. Finally, we've got two questions left. How much of the estate farm is woodland or peatland? Did anybody hear that? We've got a third, a third of the um, farm. The last one we've got uh, the question was how much does how sorry how does the owner describe the positive impact of organic farming and he calls it um, a very significant impact oh well done Lim you Lim yeah Vincent well done we've got very significant excellent I think you um, gave me that answer before I gave it to you. So well done. We can see here, if we have a look, I can show you the information there. So we should have ambitious new targets. We've got a Lok Sharma, a game changer. We've got voluntarily, uh, about a third and very significant. Well done, guys. So even if you didn't get the answers beforehand, you were still listening all the way through. So uh, very good work. So we've come to the end of our um, focus on listening. We've practiced some listening. I think we've been able to see how the um, listening develops throughout and gets a little more tricky and we need to have strategies to help us achieve um, better scores as we go through, but also to remember that we're not aiming for 100%. We're aiming to get the best score for our own level. So I will hand back to um, the host, uh, yeah. IBE Alliance, and yeah. I will see everybody tomorrow. Yeah, thank you, Elaine. Thank you for your time and your wonderful session. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and thank you for your time. I know it's quite late for everybody. It's uh, it's not so late for me here. It's just lunchtime. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. And have a good day. Hope you guys have a good day too. Thank you. Thank you, Shireen. Okay. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye.